Okay, settle with the apportionment of income. Sekarang kita nak tengok uh, how to treat the expenses. Boleh tolak ke tak? First expenses yang kita ada is annuity payable. If the executor is obligated to pay any annuity from the income of the estate, dia kena buat pembayaran kepada waris secara um, berkala, recurring dan nilai yang dia bayar tu sama. Setiap bulan kena bayar dan setiap bulan kena bayar dengan nilai yang sama. Yang tu kita panggil dia sebagai annuity. Annuity payable is allowed as deduction. So, annuity payable kita boleh tolak. Okay, dibenarkan untuk tolak deductible. Second expenses, we have admin expenses. All expenses relating to administration of the estate. Benda-benda yang berkaitan dengan pentadbiran estate is not deductible. Tak boleh tolak. Reason given that that expenses incurred after the production of the income or their expenses to incurred in related to the asset, not the business. So, tak dibenarkan untuk tolak. Third one here, kita ada executor's fee, gaji or payment made to the executors. Any remuneration paid to the executors for administering the estate is not allowed as a deduction. Tak dibenarkan, tolak. However, there is a situation where uh, remuneration paid to the executors would be deductible. Boleh tolak bila kalau executors to admin the business. Yang ni boleh tolak. Okay. Tengok betul-betul, atas ni dia admin di estate. Dia jaga estate. So, gaji executors tak boleh tolak. Tapi, kalau executors menguruskan bisnes, dia admin the business, jadi dia boleh tolak. Tapi, tolak kat mana? Deductible against business income. So, kita akan tolak dekat bawah section 4A. Tu yang saya dia, okay? Tengok, executors tu menguruskan apa? Kalau uruskan estate, tak boleh tolak. But, kalau dia uruskan bisnes, kita boleh tolak. Tolak kat mana? Tolak dekat section 4A, business income. So, here in this slide, I have summarized on what we have discussed before. This is the computation format. You're going to list everything starting from section 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D, 4F, apapalah semua sekali. You sum up all of them. You akan dapat aggregate income. From aggregate income, we're going to deduct current year business loss, annuity payable, Executor's fee and approved donation. Untuk approved donation, please note that uh, according to budget 2020, we're going to restrict to 10% of AI only. So, yang mana yang lagi sikit lah antara dua. Amount of donation or 10% of AI, yang tu akan kita letak kat sini. Dah dapat everything here. You akan arrive at total income and kalau this is to resident, dia akan eligible for some relief. Relief here, uh, berita baik, dia akan provide untuk you dalam final exam. So, you tak payah nak hafal but you nak kena tahulah how to apply the relief table. Last kali, baru kita akan dapat chargeable income. Untuk dua orang ni lah. Satu untuk disease. Penantar one untuk executors. So, dalam kolom remarks ni, I letak juga untuk business income and rental. Kita guna time basis. While for interest and dividend, kita akan tengok receipt basis. 
Lepas tu here kat sini untuk current year business loss kita akan apportion ikut time. Remember kalau unabsorb business loss, loss yang bawa daripada tahun-tahun lepas kita tak payah apportion, semua bagi terus kepada disease. Tapi untuk this year, current year business loss, you need to apportion ikut time basis. Okay, annuity payable boleh tolak, executor's fee not deductible and approved donation, you tengoklah siapa yang buat that donation. Kita akan letak dekat column yang orang yang do the donation and dia akan restrictkan sebanyak 10% of AI. Here is the relief table that will be provided to you uh, in provided for you in the final exam. Okay, dia akan bagi dekat you satu table relief. Another one kita ada rebates. So hopefully you still remember the difference between relief and tax rebate. Kat sini dia dah bagi dah semua according to budget uh, 2020. Okay, you tak payah hafal but you dah kena tahu how to apply the relief according to the situation given in the question. Alright, the last uh, items yang kita nak kena tahu juga is berkenaan dengan the determination of tax rate. Nak guna tax rate yang mana untuk pengiraan income tax for the deceased and executors. So, tengok untuk deceased dulu. For deceased, the question that you need to ask yourself is whether the deceased person is resident ke tak. Kita akan tengok dekat dia punya residency status. If the deceased is resident, jawapan dia yes, dia akan guna scale rate. I will show you the scale rate in case you dah lupa macam mana bentuk scale rate tu. And sebab dia resident juga, dia boleh dapat relief and rebates. Tu untuk resident. Kalau disease, si mati tu adalah non-resident, kita akan charge dia flat rate. Flat rate tu pula flat sebanyak 30%. So, you nak kena jawab dengan sentence yang full, flat rate of 30%. Kalau you just bagi tahu flat rate, you tak akan score full marks. You kena bagi tahu flat rate of 30%. Dan since dia bukan uh, resident, dia tak boleh dapat relief and rebates. Yang ni untuk disease person. Okay, kita move kepada executor pula. Untuk executors, we are not going to look at, at his residency status tapi kita akan tengok the domicile status of the deceased individual. Penentuan uh, kadar cukai kepada pentadbir bergantung kepada status domisil si mati bukannya status resident uh, pentadbir. Okay? Kalau this is died domicile in Malaysia, yes, executors akan uh, dikenakan tax menggunakan scale rate dan executors layak untuk claim special relief sebanyak RM9,000. However, if the disease died not domicile, died tapi not domicile, yang ni died domicile, Executors will be charged uh, of tax sebanyak 24%, flat rate 24% and executors is not entitled for any special relief. Tak boleh claim any relief sebab this is died domicile in Malaysia. Eh sorry, this is died not domicile in Malaysia. Okay. So, untuk executors tu, residency status tak penting tapi kita akan tengok si mati tu died domisal or not. So, here is the scale rate. Inilah yang kita namakan sebagai scale rate. 
hopefully you masih ingat macam mana nak guna scale rate. Untuk scale rate ni, kita akan uh, charge uh, taxpayer according to their level of income. Okay. So, kalau you earn more, you will be taxed more. And kalau you earn less, you akan bayar tax sikit lah. As compared to kalau flat rate, kan? Flat rate, dia terus akan charge you 30% regardless of your level of income. So, that's why lah kalau boleh orang nak status resident. Sebab kalau resident, guna scale rate. Tapi kalau NR, dia akan charge you terus flat rate of 30%. Untuk you punya income tax Okay Tu untuk disease Tapi kalau executors Kita akan tengok Disease Died domicile So kalau died domicile Guna scale rate Kalau died not domicile Guna flat rate Tapi flat rate dia bukan 30% Flat rate, flat rate untuk executors 24% Okay, yang ni flat rate untuk uh, disease yang non-resident. Jangan tertukar, okay? So, last but not least, uh, kita akan tengok apa yang dimaksudkan dengan uh, domisal. Kita tahu uh, disease died domisal. So, executors akan dikenakan tax uh, guna scale rate. Lepas tu, dia akan dapat special relief kan? Special relief sebanyak RM9,000. Yang ni untuk executors. Okay. Apa maksud domisal? Domisal is the country in which a person has permanent home. So, dia meninggal kat Malaysia, rumah dia ada rumah kat Malaysia. Jadi, dia dikira sebagai died domisal in Malaysia. The person has been habitually and physically present dekat dia memang sepanjang hayat dia, dia memang wujud tinggal hidup dekat Malaysia or that person has the intention to reside in that country permanently. Dia tak ada rumah, dia macam tak boleh nak tentukan hmm, dia punya secara fizikal wujud kat mana tapi kita tengok dia punya intention. Dia memang berniat nak duduk dekat Malaysia selama-lamanya. So, once dia meninggal, dia dikira sebagai died domicile in Malaysia. For tax purposes, once a person is said to be domicile in Malaysia, there is a presumption of continuity. Dia tak adalah sekejap died domicile, sekejap tak domicile. Once dia dikira sebagai berstatus domicile di Malaysia, Sampai bila-bila lah dia memegang status domisil tersebut. So, we have come to the end of this uh, topic uh, lecture. Uh, hopefully, you have uh, learned something from this uh, video. Uh, don't forget to attend the class to do some uh, exercise on this topic to increase your understanding on the Theory and tax treatment for estate under administration. Thank you for watching. See you.